There's a world full of mercy and peace Mercy and peace waiting for me Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Patience and I make YouTube content a Christian content based on my journey with Jesus and I'm so happy you're here um, If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe below, share this video, like, leave a comment, let me know what you think uh, when you do all these things. It really helps the video to get to other people. The YouTube algorithm sees engagement and it pushes out the video to lots more people. So go ahead and do that if you haven't and yeah, let's get started. Today's video is Christian Struggles. If you live the Christian life, you know that it's not easy. You have a lot of struggles if you're living for the Lord. And it is not called the narrow path for nothing. It is literally a struggle, but it is worth it. It is a struggle that is well worth it. So a little backstory on me. It doesn't look like it, but I used to be the life of the party. I used to love partying. I... For some reason, I got to a point where I I could drink so much and still not, like, you know, um, how do I put it? Like, I would be able to hold my alcohol. Is, is that the term? Like, and I used to love it, genuinely. And, remember, I was very much a Christian, and I was telling my friends the other day, that sometimes I would just pray, God, I'm going out, go with me, take care of me, make sure nothing bad happens, right? And of course, this is wrong. This is the life of a lukewarm Christian. And if you haven't watched my lukewarm video before, go watch it. But it's just the fact that a lot of Christians live this way and they they do not see anything wrong with it oh it's just some fun just harmless fun and well it's not harmless because if if you really think about it think about the life choices that you make when you're drunk think about all think about all the things that could go wrong because you were drunk or because you were high think about all the sins that you could also commit because you were drunk. There's so many things that happen in the environment where even if you're not the drunkest one, other drunk people are there. There's so many things happening in the club. You know, we all like to talk about having a good time, but it's not always a good time. And we don't want to admit it, but it's not always a good time. The feeling when it wears down, it's it's not it's not the best thing, and that's why we need people need to drink more and more and more. Even vape, vape is, vape is looked up like, vape looks like the cooler version, like the harmless one, um, shisha. You want to look cool, weed, so normalized, and you know, just like everybody else, I was like. Mm harmless harmless fun not gonna kill anybody we're just you know chilling vibing doing like living our best lives living our best lives you know and we can excuse it all we want but if we're honest this is not the kind of life that god wants for us it's not and I know I used to like if I if I drink a lot the next day I would be feeling some type of way not always just depending on how much I drank but the next day I would be feeling low sometimes it would take two days or more to wear off um, there's getting sick you know there's the aftermath the hangover where you cannot concentrate you have a headache is it worth it really is it really worth it you know one day i had to have a discussion with myself and say like do i really want to do this like is this do i really want this do we really want this like at some point it has to be you have to make a choice 
because if it was really that good, if it was really able to satisfy as much as whatever it is that you want to satisfy, you would be you wouldn't have to do it so often. Because there are people who have to drink every day. There are people who need to smoke every day. Regardless of the fact that it's harmful to their health, they can see things are not going well. It's destroying their lives, their relationships. They're making so many horrible mistakes because of it. And yet they're still there. It has to show you that it's not a good thing. And this is the thing about sin. Sin will feel very good it's gonna feel good oh you met the man of your dreams or whatever you, you just want to have a good time but sin makes you feel good for the moment but it also blinds you so that you don't know that the path where you're walking is a path to destruction so before you know it and nobody nobody likes to talk about this but fornication is the one thing that makes people suffer so much the reason why you get your heart broken over and over again is because you simply are living outside of God's will. Which fornication, having sex outside of marriage, is not God's will. And that's why you find yourself getting heartbroken. I'm not saying that people who, have, who wait for marriage do not get hurt, but the pain is a lot less and easier to get over than people who engage in sex outside of marriage and so you're always going to get hurt until you decide to give yourself to god it's it's a sacrifice but it's a sacrifice that's well worth it you can't you can't trust the world to show you how to live and just because everybody else is doing it just because everybody else is doing it doesn't make it okay be the one person that decides okay enough is enough i'm gonna live for god because i love him you cannot say you love him if you do not live for him and so for me just deciding to you know change my lifestyle wasn't easy obviously you get days where you're like lonely remember a time where you know i was you know doing the thing and i'm in class right and i've decided okay i've decided okay i'm not I'm not like uh, putting the guys in the back seat of my life and there's this guy and he was just not my type at all but he was for some reason looking so good and like I was just thinking wow like I just want to cuddle but you have to fight thoughts like that you have to just decide because the sacrifice is hard but the result is well worth it delayed gratification is so good delayed gratification it's it's a it's it's an it's it's something that you have to work on constantly so even for me it didn't take me one day it didn't take me even one week it just took me trying over and over and the more like i cut off the things that i i'm telling you to cut off the easier it was for me to stop desiring um those things right you you want to change you have to do things differently. You have to change your environment, ch- change what you see, change how, you, how you're thinking. Um, just change. Because we won't admit it, but a life of sin is consists of so many heartbreaks. And now that I'm on this other side of life, it's better to go through hardship in christ than it is to go through it outside of christ because the way we cope outside of you know jesus christ is we cope we we have toxic ways of coping ways that bring us even more this this destruction 
we do things that make make it worse you know like how people say if you want to get over someone get under someone new i used to give that kind of advice to my friends (laughs) in those days um (laughs) but it's wrong it's wrong and therefore this is why i'm telling you you have to decide to to surround yourself with the right kind of people because back then i wasn't the right kind of person to surround yourself with i'm gonna be making you take as many shots as you can yeah that's the kind of person that i used to be among other things but if i could turn my life around so can you if i could change and put it all behind me so can you but it doesn't come without a sacrifice so you have to decide what's more important to me is it god or is it fun do i want to live for god or do i want to keep up appearances on social media you have to decide I know a lot of people don't talk about this, but our reward is not just in heaven, but here on earth as well. God has things, ways that he rewards us for walking in his ways and for walking in ways that please him, for living for him in a pure um, lifestyle. God has called us to purity. God has called us to be holy just as he is holy, but that's not always easy. It's a struggle, especially if you've not lived your whole life for Christ. Some of these things do not come as easy for you. Um, they're not things that you you get accustomed to um, very fast and sometimes you'll fall. But the Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times and he still gets back up. So be encouraged. Know that everybody goes through this. And hopefully this video will help you get through whatever struggles you're facing. And do not worry if you're in, in the stage of, you know, just being newly uh, born again, not knowing how to walk in the life that God has called you to lead. Don't worry. It is hard for all of us but this is why we have the holy spirit he helps us he literally helps us to do what is right if god himself did not know how hard it is he wouldn't have sent jesus christ to die for our sins and to help us the bible says that we do not serve um a a a a master we do not have a high priest who is not Um, who does not know what we struggle with. He was right here on earth. He knows everything that we went through. And if it is any encouragement, look at how God dealt with the people that used to be around him that sinned or made big mistakes. Think about Peter. When Jesus died, Peter went back to fishing. Yes, after all of that time. And people talk about, you know, you know, Peter denied Jesus three times. Yeah, he did. He did. And Jesus still said that it is on that rock, him, that he would build his church. And when Jesus died, Peter went back to fishing. He went back to being Simon. And he literally forgot all the miracles that Jesus did, everything that Jesus has taught him. He was literally walking side by side with the Lord God himself. And he went back to fishing. So you're not that bad. Think about how Jesus treated the woman who was caught in adultery. He said, if any one of you is without sin, let them cast the stone first. That's how Jesus dealt with people. Think about how he dealt with the woman at the well. The woman at the well had what? Was it five husbands? And Jesus said, you know, come and drink from the what are, let me give you the water of life that you may never thirst again. Jesus didn't tell her, oh, you know you have five husbands. He didn't send her away. And God is not sending you away. He wants to help you. He wants you to live the life that he wants you to. He is on your 
team. He is cheering you on. He is rooting for you. I say this all the time. God is on your side. And this video is just one of the signs that God really wants to help you. I wouldn't be here making this video if God was not trying to help you live the way he wants you to live so that it can be a lot easier and so much bearable. And let me tell you, once you get through the initial struggles, it becomes so much easier. It The hardship does not always last. We go through seasons, yes, but the initial things that you deal with, whether it's getting rid of sin, whether it's um, getting used to reading your Bible, whether it's getting used to prayer, in the beginning, it might be hard, but the more you do it, the easier it gets, and the and and you'll start to feel better. You're, I thank God all the time that this is who I am. I never thought I would be here, but I am a living testimony that it is doable. Let me get into the tips. I'm going to be talking about all the Christian struggles that I faced, and which all of us really have faced at some point, and how I overcame them, and hopefully they're gonna help you overcome. First of all, gossip. This is gossip is probably the very first things that I decided to cut off in my life. People don't think about gossip as being harmful. They think it's not a sin, and and a lot of girls, women who are Christians, will not will will think that they are living the perfect holiest life, but still gossip. And gossip is really just talk about people. Whether the, whether what you're talking about is real or not, whether it's true or not, don't engage. Think about it as, what if it was you and people were saying all these things about you? Now, if it is, if you want to know, okay, how do I, how do I know whether what I'm talking about is gossip or not? What, how do I know that my talk? And you know, it's not just gossip. It's, filthy talk the bible talks about filthy talk that it should not be coming out of your mouth as a christian so cursing right you can't curse at people you can't you can't be using filthy words you can't be gossiping you can't be letting unholy um you can't be engaging in unholy conversations, conversations that are not edifying. So how do you know that the conversation that I'm having is a conversation that is um, edifying or does not is not offensive, is not filthy, does not uh, dishonor God? Because God is always with us. God is God. The Holy Spirit is always. He lives inside of us. So do not engage in conversations that dishonor him dishonor him so how do you know the bible says do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but what but only what is helpful or building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen the, the bible is so clear on how we have to hold to to carry ourselves as christians and we have to think about it so even before like you think about okay i don't i'm not fornicating i'm not partying i don't smoke i don't drink but then you gossip you say bad things about other people you use cuss words even just watching shows that that glorify unwholesome talk it's wrong listening to music that glorify the, the very things that God says not to do is still wrong. You know, sadly, we live in a world where um, sex outside of marriage has been so normalized that we do not think that it's a sin anymore. But it is. But the good news is, is struggling is a good thing because it means that you're not complacent and you're not comfortable in your sin. So it's good to... It's good to... Um, struggle against these things um partying drinking smoking all not okay paul was saying that all things are per permissible but not all things are beneficial especially in our walk with jesus christ not all things are beneficial and some of these things, they open doors to the enemy for more oppression, for more bad things to happen. Take alcohol, for instance. We all like to like 
think that it's so enjoyable but when you think about it alcohol in, in itself is a depressant and that's why when you get out of a hangover for example you're gonna be feeling depressed you're gonna be down you're not gonna be feeling yourself you're not gonna be in a good mood and this can last for a while so you are gonna need to drink more <laughs> to feel better <laughs> to put yourself in high spirits smoking as well and we're not even gonna go into like the health harmful um what what it does to our health but it's even just the guilt of engaging in all of these activities makes us feel like oh i can't i can't pray now i can't go to god because you're feeling guilty god doesn't put the guilt there it's the devil the devil makes you feel too guilty to go to god and then he makes you feel comfortable in your sin that's how it works how do you overcome you know the life that you had before where it was okay to fornicate, where it was okay to sin, to to drink and to smoke and to gossip and to cuss. So number one is just really the word of God. The word of God is, is water to our souls and it washes away. It washes you clean. I know this. So he was talking about how Christ loved the church. And so in relation to the church, which the church is consists of you and me, and it says that to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. And he did this to present himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. So this is the hack right there. The word of God, it says cleansing, right? By the cleansing, by the cleansing of God's word. It's a, it's, it's a key right there. The word of God cleanses. It might not happen overnight, but the more you do it, the more, um, the more it does the cleansing. Just sit, sit with the word of God. We live in a world where we, we're always looking for a distraction. We always want to... We always want to feel like we're busy doing something. We we wanna we don't wanna concentrate too much. We, we don't wanna be in the quiet. We don't wanna spend time in the quiet uh, place, right? We wanna we always want our minds to be engaged in something. That's why we have TikTok shorts. Uh, tick uh, TikToks. Why? Right? That's why we have shorts. That's why we have reels. That's why we have uh, YouTube and Netflix and all these things. But we. You have to take your time. You can't do this walk without sacrificing. Everybody had to sacrifice. Everybody has to sacrifice. Nobody that you see walking with God successfully has done it without sacrificing. So you have to sacrifice. Take some time to read your Bible. Read the New Testament especially. It, it, brings, it opens your eyes to a lot of things, right? And your heart, it opens up your heart to so many things. So take your time and read. You give so much time to things that do not benefit you. How about 10 minutes to read the word of God? How about 20? How about 30? How about an hour? You think, oh, an hour, a whole hour? But like reading the word of God needs meditation. Meditation is just sitting on what you've read and thinking about it over and over, applying it to your life. Think about what it means. Sit with the word of God. And if you find it hard, find people who teach the word of God. There are so many people who teach the word of God. Let them teach you. Watch videos that are actually teaching the word of God. Even on TikTok, that's how I started out. I started out with listening to people teaching and talking about the word of God. And then eventually I started to love it and I started to read it on my own. So the word of God is your biggest your biggest help in trying to overcome your struggles. And another thing that really helps me is just minding, being mindful of what I watch. If I spend all my time watching videos and clips and looking at pictures of people constantly smoking or drinking or partying at the like always doing all these things that you've decided to live leave behind it's gonna be hard for you you're gonna be 
missing it you're gonna be reminiscing you're gonna be meditating on it you have to meditate on the right things so watch what you consume garbage in garbage out so what you what you consume what you focus on really is what your desire is gonna be focused on it's gonna be so much harder to forget that life and to want to embrace your new life so instead of looking at people who love to party love to drink and smoke and live this very out there lives instead of watching um channels that promote uh, the lifestyle that god is against how about finding people who live the life that pleases god and follow them find out what they do look at how they dress look at how they speak Because there are so many out there, maybe not as many as the people who make content for the world, but there are also people who make content that is glorifying God. It is not hard. And the more you watch godly content, the more Instagram or YouTube or TikTok is going to recommend it. Your algorithm is going to change based on what you consume. So if you decide, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, every time you see a video or a picture that is not decent or that is um, glorifying the things of the world, just um, tap on it and say not interested. And every time you see someone who's posting for God, watch that, like that, save that. Soon enough, your algorithm is going to change and you're going to be seeing more godly things. Do that and it's going to help you, guaranteed. And then just surround yourself with the right people. And if you don't know who to surround yourself with, go to church. People hate church nowadays, but it's very important to live in a community, um, to have friends who are godly, who are going to have godly conversations, who are going to keep you accountable. It's very, very important. If you do not have friends in church, um, look at the the things that they tell you to sign up for. A lot of churches have, you know, um, cell groups, fellowship groups. Sign up for those. When they call for new believers, Go, go so that they can recognize you, so that they can direct you on fellowships and things like that. Just try and make friends and surround yourself with the right people who love God and want to do this. Most importantly, pray about it. Tell God, be vulnerable before God. If you're having trouble praying, one of the things that I can tell you to do is just go before God and tell him, God, I'm struggling to pray because I feel guilty. I feel guilty. I feel dirty. I feel like you're not going to hear me. And then start from there. Have a conversation with God. Tell him everything you're struggling with. Tell him to help you. And he will. There is no time that God will not help you when you ask when you ask for him in the name of Jesus. Ask and you will receive. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said that up to now you have not asked and therefore you haven't received. Alright, I really hope that this video helped. If it has, let me know, leave a comment, like, share, 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 and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you know every time I upload a new video. And if you're struggling, if you're struggling to leave behind your old life, I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that anybody who's watching this and they're struggling, that you will just go and help them. Send the Holy Spirit to them. Let them know that you're there to hold them up. Send them godly people to their lives. Send them send them um, people who will help them to walk this salvation journey. Bring to mind um, scripture. Uh, give them the desire to seek you, to pray, and to read the Bible, and to watch godly things in the name of jesus i have prayed trusting and believing amen and if you haven't received jesus christ as your lord and savior this is your chance just this is the best life you could ever live and just say this prayer and you're gonna be saved and you're gonna be born again lord jesus thank you for dying for me i believe that you came to die for me so that i can have a life and life in abundance and right now i 
receive your salvation. I declare that you are my Lord and Savior from now on. I repent for all my sins and I decide to turn away from my old life and take on this life in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye. You're the God who reigns, I know You're the God who 